Hello, how's it going? Today we're at Fire Island in Margate. I've shot a few videos here, here over the past few years. It's a damn good homemade infinity curve, but there's been multiple random things that we've set up in here. Oh, I'm a silhouette, I'm a silhouette. Today is part two of the reverb hardware controller that I built last week. It's right here. But instead of it just being plugged into one iMac like last week, we've got it plugged into three of them. Oh yeah. So yeah, we'll have a rundown of what we've got on these tables. You might be thinking, well, this is completely pointless, but it's an experiment. That's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna figure out if it was gonna be any use to do it like this at all. And if there's a chance of it being remotely interesting, we're gonna try and plug it into more iMacs. I know, crazy. Initially. I plan to have it plugged into more iMacs. I've been scouring the internet for cheap ones and managed to find multiple ones that are working for about 20 to 35 pounds each. Because of course, they're only about 20 years old, so they're not that desirable at all at the minute anyway. After getting really frustrated for basically the past two days, trying to install the right operating systems and the right pieces of software to, for it to work, I've only ended up getting three of them to actually work. But I think that'll be enough to kind of give it a test today and see what it actually does. So each of them have their own MIDI Sport USB MIDI interface. As you can see, there's two here. No, there's one there. And there's one hiding around here somewhere. And there's a MIDI splitter here. So that is coming from the controller right here and talking to these three separately. We're gonna try it today synced and unsynced. So this is gonna send out a MIDI clock. We're not gonna be using it for anything else, but we won't use that until later on in the video. Then we've got stereo outputs from each of these going into this lovely uh, Roland PA250 mixing desk. So there's six Six channels, Mac 1 left, right, Mac 2 left, right, Mac 3 left, right, boom. And there's also an effects send that's going through the effects pedals to make it sound a little bit more, I don't know, funky. First things first, let's get them turned on. Oh. Huh. So we've got them set up in different colours. I did a Patreon live stream of setting it up yesterday. When it came up, they looked like the Powerpuff Girls, so we're gonna be running with that. But evidently, I must have turned them all off yesterday without shutting them down. So we're gonna let them do this for about five to 10 minutes, and then finally, we can give this a test. God, they're slow. Right, let's get rebirth going on all of these ones. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. It's never gonna get old, that. So now we've got it all set up, as you can see. It's all got rebirth on it. I haven't been able to get the refresh rates matched up, so you're gonna have to get used to the lines, but it's fine. It's just part and parcel of having to deal with different refresh rates and the LED refresh rates, so it's, uh, it's all over the place. First off, we've got it on the demo mode, of course, and then we're gonna try and write something, but let's see what we get uh, to start with. As you can see, they're all out of sync with each other, but that's because they're going on their internal clocks and they've all got slightly different speeds and RAM settings. So they're all a little bit out of sync, but we'll try and sync them up in a little bit. But I'm gonna bash some sequences out on here and we're gonna try and do some poly rhythms first. I think that's what's gonna be good. Right, so I've put three really simple sequences going into it. This is only two steps long on this one. This one's six steps long and this one's eight steps long. So they should be going out of sync.
So what we're going to try and do now is change the tempo on each of them and uh, see if we can get them going and phasing in and out with each other, if you see what I mean. When we press play on this it's all going to sync up we have to bear in mind that some of these uh, need to actually be offset they seem to be running these two are running on the same operating system but this one is a slightly different one don't ask why technical difficulties but i figured that these need to be adjusted to about 160 milliseconds each to be in sync with this one but then they come into sync So we're gonna try some different things. The next thing we're gonna try, we're gonna try and use the pattern buttons, these pattern select buttons right here, to be able to program in multiple chords that play uh, different parts of the chords.
So this setup that I've been experimenting with today, it's, I've got to be honest, it's quite a handful, like having to uh, kind of control all of these free computers and then going over and changing things and stuff. It's going to take quite a bit of figuring out, I think. I still need to figure out getting really quick on the hotkeys to be able to program new things. But uh, primarily, I think if I was ever to make this into a set kind of thing, this computer would be the main kind of carrier of the set stuff and I'd also make a mod pack. You can update for instance the skins on the front so you can change the colors and the artwork on the front but most importantly you can update the drum sounds, the drum samples and I've got to be honest I'm not the biggest fan of the 909 snare and a couple of the instruments on the 909 so I'd update them to be a little bit more in keeping with what I'm into really and I'd update the snare so it's a bit more doom so it's a bit more like a lindrummy kind of sound. This was primarily carry it, and then these would come in and out as kind of like harmonies, polyrhythmic bits on the top, twinkles and stuff like that, and uh, keeping the drums off most of the time on these two. But there might still be scope on adding patterns that are drums on these, who knows? 
And then of course you can let them go completely out of sync in parts to let them mold and change and stuff. There's a lot of scope, but there's a lot of figuring out. Uh, there's gonna be another part of this. I'm gonna build on it, I'm gonna practice it, and I'm gonna see if I can get a whole chunk of music done with this, and we'll come back here and we'll do it again. But that'll be in a couple of weeks, and that's when we'll have the updated drum sounds on the 909, I think. So yeah, all in all, it's pretty funky. It just needs a little bit more work. I'm gonna have at least the Rebirth controller and one of the iMacs running at this museum's not obsolete. If you wanna try it for yourself, who knows, maybe I'll figure out a way of getting it all set up there so you can play it with all of them, but it'll be a right old handful. You can still watch the live stream of me setting it up, figuring out all the technical implications and stuff like that. That's still over on Patreon as well as all the vlogs about this and all of the vlogs and live streams that are yet to come. So if you wanna support these pretty stupid experiments, then please go and check it out over there because it really helps with making these videos possible. Anyway, until next time, I'm look mum no computer this is where we're at on the rebirth orchestra and yeah if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe and yeah don't be scared to try it maybe maybe don't try and make a rebirth orchestra but i'm not stopping you i'm not stopping you Ooh.